In eastern Idaho, the Teton River snakes through irrigated farmland. In this arid country, farmers and fish compete for a scarce resource, water. When a drought set in, making water even more scarce, the native Yellowstone cutthroat trout population collapsed. When those numbers were finally made um, publicly available, shockwaves ran through both the angling and the environmental community at such a precipitous decline of our native fish. A routine count in 2003 revealed native trout had declined 95 percent in the upper Teton River drainage. One of the reasons, a century of human alterations to the region's streams and rivers. Creeks flowing off the western flanks of the Teton Mountains no longer reach the main stem of the Teton River because the water gets diverted for irrigating farms. Some creeks dry up so fast, conservationists wade in to rescue stranded fish. Using a method called electrofishing, crews stun the fish with an electrical shock and then scoop them up with nets. They move the native fish upstream to what they call live water and put non-natives in a pond. So what are you taking out? Uh, the sculpin. They won't do well in the pond. They're going to need to go to a, a flowing stream. That's only a temporary fix. Over time, the lack of water blocks the cutthroat's natural migration. Adults swim up the tributaries to spawn, but then their creeks dry up, trapping their offspring, which don't survive. Friends of the Teton River is a group that goes to great lengths to save native fish. They even rebuilt a dam for farmers to help protect the fish. Before it was fixed, this broken dam allowed fish to get flushed into irrigation ditches and wind up marooned on farmers' fields. And so the fish would end up down in the canal, and every year when it got to be this time of year and the creek dried up, which we see right now, it's almost completely dry, those fish were stranded down there and would perish, uh, perhaps uh, in the thousands. With the new dam, fish are screened to keep them out of the canals. Drought and dams aren't the only threats to the cutthroat survival. It also faces competition from non-native brook and rainbow trout. The non-natives spawn earlier than cutthroat, so their offspring are bigger and better able to compete for food and habitat. And the non-natives don't run as far up the mountain streams, so they're less likely to get stranded. Rainbows not only dominate the habitat, but also breed with cutthroats, diluting the gene pool. When the Yellowstone cutthroat plummeted, non-native numbers increased by 300%. In response, Friends of the Teton River has started a program called Open Channels. The goal is to keep water flowing through the tributaries and into the Teton River from June to August, a critical time for spawning cutthroat. Conservationists say they'll keep fighting to save this native fish by reconnecting mountain streams and rivers. And many, many folks uh, feel that it would be a tragedy to lose our native trout when we're at a point now when we can recover them if we work hard to do so. Not on my watch will, will we let them go extinct. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.